Dr. David E. Clark here, Clark with an E, as I keep saying. Welcome back to the podcast. We are continuing in my series. I say we, it's just me, but people say that. We are continuing in my series, I Destroyed My Marriage, based on the brand new book of that same title. I'm glad you're listening. By the way, if you haven't visited my website, davideclarkphd.com, you're missing out. Phil Dugas of Dugas Creative, one of my favorite son-in-laws, by the way, has created a dynamite website. All my resources for marriage, for marriages in crisis, no matter the type of crisis, are on davideclarkphd.com. Now, in today's podcast, I'm going to try to convince you that you have to leave your home in order to save your marriage. If you know someone who sinned terribly and whose spouse wants a divorce, of course, it could be you or someone you know, let them know about these podcasts and the book they're based on, I Destroyed My Marriage. Now, you can only get this book on my website. You see how I cleverly mentioned my website again? This is subtle marketing, my friends, subtle marketing. Actually, I'm just trying to help people. So let's continue now. Why you have to leave your home if you're the one that has sinned terribly. Now, when it comes to separation, one important caveat, if you are the sinning spouse and you are the mother of small children birthed through kindergarten, I do not recommend you leave your kids. Uh, Small children need their mom, period. We have to have them at least elementary school age. I do not want you to leave your home, but only when you have worked out a reasonable, I mean, excuse me, I do want you to leave your home, but only when you have worked out a reasonable custody schedule with your husband. This is talking to the, the young mom. Just as if you were divorced, you will share the kids. Many of my separated couples have used a 50-50 arrangement, half the week with one spouse, half the week with the other spouse, or one week on, one week off. Often the sharing plan will be determined by your work hours, life circumstances, and availability of family and friends. So very small children will need to be with mom more than dad. For children under five, I recommend the mom, even if she is the one who destroyed the marriage, be the main custodial parent. Dad will see the children every day if possible and for five to six hours each weekend day. Children in first grade and up will be left at home with dad. Mom, who is living elsewhere, will see these older children on a regular basis, of course, during the separation. We don't want to violate that parent-child relationship. Now, you may need the help of a licensed Christian therapist to work out an acceptable child sharing plan and more on the separation agreement you're going to come up with in a later podcast. Look, no one wants to leave home. I get that. Frankly, you shouldn't want to leave. But everyone, everyone who has severely damaged his or her marriage has to leave home. Everything in you is screaming, but Dr. Clark, Dave, don't separate. I don't want to separate. Separation seems like the worst possible action. It feels terribly wrong, unnatural, final, hopeless. You are sure it will end your marriage. Calm down and listen to me. Your marriage is already over. Your spouse fully intends to divorce you. That decision has been made. We are trying to change her mind and motivate her to reconsider her decision to divorce you. If you decide to stay, listen to me, she will never change her mind. You will be divorced, 100%. Uh, possibility. By refusing to leave home, you send this message to your spouse. I am a selfish jerk. I don't respect you and I will never truly change. This isn't the message you intend to send, but it is the message she receives. If you want a chance to save your marriage, you must get out of your home and get out as soon as possible. Okay, here's why you have to leave. And if you have to listen to this podcast two or three times and many have to and and reread the section in the book, do it because I know it's tough. Leaving shows that you get it, that you understand the terrible pain you have inflicted on her. In this case, it's it's the wife you've, you've harmed. Not leaving shows that you don't get it and that you never will. You communicate that your destructive actions aren't that bad and not serious enough to warrant leaving. Leaving may help her restore the safety and security you stole from her with your sinful actions. Not leaving continues to attack her safety and security. She will be constantly worried that you will hurt her again. And who could blame her? In fact, you are hurting her again and again and again by staying in her home. And make no mistake about it, it's her home. At least it is now. Leaving gives her the space she desperately wants and needs from you. With you gone, she can begin to heal from what you've done. Not leaving denies her this needed space and she will stay intimately connected to all of your past damaging actions. There's nowhere to hide. There's no space, you see. With you at home, she cannot and she will not heal. 
to get space, guess what she'll do? It begins with a D. When, not if she divorces you, she'll get her space. You're forcing her to do that. Leaving may cause her to hate you less. Any reduction in her rage and resentment is a good thing. Not leaving will cause her to hate you more and more and more. Look, she already hates you, and now your refusal to separate will stoke her resentment with you to gigantic proportions. Leaving may enable her to do specific work to clean out poison you've caused in her life. She may seek out trusted persons, family, close friends, a counselor, a pastor, and talk out her pain and betrayal. Not leaving will ensure that she does not do any work on her pain. Her focus will remain on you, what you've done to her, and what you keep on doing to her by staying. She will move further and further away from the release of her pain and forgiveness. And again, none of this is based on theory. I have worked for 33 years with couples in this situation, so I know what I'm talking about. This is exactly what happens. It's the truth. Leaving may, may lead to her softening and seriously considering if divorce is the right step. She may weigh the pros and cons. She may pray and ask God for guidance on the decision. Maybe. Look, you should settle for a maybe as opposed to I'm done with you forever. Not leaving will lead to her hardening of her resolve to divorce you. Your presence will prevent her from thinking and praying and processing the decision. She will even more firmly believe divorce is her only option. I have heard this from hundreds of women, particularly whose husbands have gouged them and they're divorcing them and the guy won't leave. Done deal. No way she's ever going to process and pray with you there. The air you breathe, she resents. Leaving will give you the time and space you need to work hard on your individual issues. You must make your spiritual and emotional health your number one priority in phase two. If you don't get fixed and into recovery, she will definitely divorce you. Your only shot is to change and to prove that change. Not leaving will prevent you from getting your all-important personal work done. You will remain totally focused on her, not yourself. After you've divorced, you'll have plenty of time and space to do your healing. I'm talking to a guy right now in my practice. I think this is a, this is a by, uh, by phone session. I forget where he lives, but not important. He uh, has gouged his wife. He's destroyed his marriage, and he is resisting leaving the home. I've told him, in fact, I'm not going to talk to you again on the phone until you're out. That's how important it is. His wife is, has no chance to heal and is refusing to leave. Plus, I said, and of course, he's totally focused on her, winning her back, pursuing, making all the classic mistakes. I said, sir, you've got to focus on you. If you stay with your wife, you're just focused on her and what you can do. You can't help yourself trying to be nice and pursue her, which is wrong anyway. Leaving will give your spouse a realistic taste of divorce, and she may not like it. Maybe. She'll be a single parent. She'll have to do everything in the home without help. There will be money pressures. Her stress level will go up. You're not trying to make that happen, but that's what will happen. Not leaving will give her zero taste of divorce. With you in the house, shouldering your share of the load, maybe even more since you're trying to pursue her, she won't realize how divorce will dramatically and negatively change her life. Leaving will get you away from her 24-7 rejection and coldness. And you know what? That's brutal. Even though you deserve it, no question about that, you'll get emotionally stuck by facing it every minute of every day. What guys tend to do is they, if, they try, if they stay is they also just get emotionally burdened and they feel terrible and they get hopeless because she's rejecting you every day, which she should do, and then they quit. Not leaving will expose you to the full force of her rejection. You will be depressed, hurt, and angry. You may get defensive and say hurtful things to her, thus confirming her decision to divorce you. You will not be able to focus on your issues and do the work of changing yourself. And again, if you stay, yes, she will be taking pot shots at you every chance she gets. It's kind of an unconscious setup. She wants you to be angry. She wants you to confirm that you're a dirtball and she's divorcing you. And the trouble is, that's what's going to happen. You ever have, you ever heard the phrase, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned? It is the absolute truth. Every husband listening knows that. But, but it's even worse when you, when you wounded her so deeply and terribly. Get, you got to get away from that. Now, this is brutal to hear. I know that. And I know you have questions. In the next podcast, I'm going to answer your questions. 
because I've heard these questions my whole career in terms of why do I have to leave and how about this and how about that and have you considered this? Well, yeah, I have considered all of that. After 33 years, no question surprises me. So we're going to focus on that in this next podcast. Until then, David E. Clark, Clark with an E, out.